Recently, we watched Die Hard 2. This is the follow-up to Die Hard, a movie that released in 2020 or 2023, depending on when you first saw it. This film was originally released on the now-dead streaming service Quibi. Quibi was a site that uh, various TV shows and pieces of media were posted to, and they were cut down into very small bites, for example, 11 to 15 minute episodes. Those episodes then, at the very end of the season, Season, get added all together to make a larger film and that's what happened with the first Die Hard and that's what happened with Die Hard 2. After Quibi shut down, Die Hard I believe moved to Amazon Studios and they continued with the production considering it apparently got enough viewership which surprised me because I had never heard of this film until it randomly came across my lap one day. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, Die Hard 1 was very funny. It wasn't a perfect film and it definitely wasn't a four out of four. However, it was probably one of the funniest thing Kevin Hartz has done in a long time. On top of that, John Travolta was just a perfect, insane individual, and I didn't really expect him to go as hard as he did in that role. And the whole script and plot kept you guessing all the way up until the end. The end is where I found it to be the most contrived and just not that great. So, when I found out that there was going to be Die Hard 2, a second season of the series, as well as uh, at the end of the second season, a full fi uh, full feature film, uh, I decided that we should definitely take a watch, uh, considering, again, the last one was pretty funny. But the concerning issue for me was John Cena. I usually do not care for John Cena very much because John Cena is just a god-awful actor. But the high budget that it seemed to have comparatively to the first season definitely was another sell. And really the only spoiler-free review that I have for you here is definitely fucking watch it. It was exceedingly funny and John Cena was put into a almost peacemaker type role. Even though he wasn't in the show that much, he still was super funny and there's this really, really, really hilarious scene at the end of the show that just absolutely killed me. I'll know which one when John Cena is wanting breakfast, okay? It just, that whole scene just threw me. And not only did this series uh, reach a new height, it also had all of its actors reach a new height within it. There was a lot of really good customer, or not customer growth, but character growth. And I really loved seeing the way that, like, Jordan from the first season kind of ended up, uh, you know, hating Kevin Hart at the beginning and how all of that sort of resolves itself. Also, Kevin has been Schwartz, a really funny guy who was on Jake and Amir and um, Parks and Rec and a couple other things. Uh, and overall, he was fucking hilarious in here too. There's also like a fucking misery uh, parody that's just, it was absurd, but it, it, it worked in my opinion. And I give this a 3.5 out of 4 stars. I think the first two episodes are actually the weakest, the first episode being the weakest of even those, and the second one being a bit better, but by the time they hit the third episode, it felt like they were fully in swing, and it just gets funnier as it goes on. So go give it a watch, it's definitely worth it. Alright, so here is my non-spoiler review of Die Hard 2. First of all, the first Die Hard movie took me by surprise. It is one of Kevin Hart's funniest films I've seen him do in quite some time. Die Hard 2 lives up to the comedy of the first and surpasses it. Ben Schwartz, who plays Kevin Hart's assistant, Andre, and whose mother is played by Paula Pell, are both fantastic additions to the cast, and I'm happy they brought back Natalie Emmanuel to reprise her role as Jordan King. John Cena also is in the film, and his addition only serves to amplify the comedy as much as Ben Schwartz. The best thing about Die Hard 2 is they play into the idea of Kevin Hart as an egomaniac who doesn't care about those beneath them in a way that is balanced perfectly with the level of humor that is in this series slash film. The villains in the movie work well and every time I thought the humor would be out uh, or just become stale, it just never did. The ending of the film leaves it open for a third season or a movie of Die Hard. And as long as we see Ben Schwartz with his mom and Natalie Emmanuel come back, I'm down to see it. All of them have great chemistry together on screen and somehow all perfectly play off each other in such a great comedic way. Die Hard 2 is a much watch for anyone who just loves to laugh and has been craving a great comedy. 
And Die Hard 1, I would give it a 4 out of 5. And Die Hard 2, I'm giving a 4.75 out of 5. Since the beginning was a little slow, that's the reason why I'm deducting the 0.25 and not making it a perfect 5. Alright guys, now that covers our spoiler-free review. However, let's get into the spoiler-filled review. So, if you want to watch this series, and I do recommend it, definitely click off. Alright. So, in this uh, follow-up to Die Hard 1, I, I mean, actually, let me give you a quick rundown of Die Hard 1. So, Die Hard 1 is a movie where Kevin Hart is tired of being just the dopey sidekick, and he wants to be the main lead action star. He finds a director who's willing to give him that, however, he has to go through action school before he's allowed to be an action star. The leader of the action school is John Travolta, and somehow we get our female co-star there as as well. See, somehow, because she kind of just enters randomly, and uh, we don't really know until the end of Die Hard uh, 1 that it was all set up, and it was all a plan to make Kevin Hart a main lead action star, but they wanted to do it through actual scenarios being thrown at Kevin without him knowing that he was being recorded, so that way it feels really real and visceral. And what happens at the end of number one is they make that film. It goes mega viral, and Kevin Hart becomes a massive leading star. In the second one, we pick up where Kevin has become a bit of a douchebag and has really made his way in the acting career for the action world, and he is just the biggest star that he's ever been. However, he has an idea. He wants to go back to that very visceral and very real film style idea, and he writes his own script for it. So, all of a sudden, when he gets kidnapped, he thinks that he is just part of the film. As it goes on, however, what he he finds out is that he is not making a film and it's actually because he uh, fired his stuntman on set one day out of the blue that all of this is even happening and that's who kidnapped him to begin with. The stuntman is named Doug and is also played by Kevin Hart and also uh, the co-star Jordan. She was the one who initially sent home her stuntman for the day and started doing her stunts and that pushed Kevin to send home his stuntman because Overall, he wanted to be the main star without anybody behind him and do all of his own stunts, mostly because he didn't want to be outshone by his co-star Jordan. And it doesn't come as a surprise to us that he did this because overall, he is a dick to his uh, assistant, Ben Schwartz. His assistant has uh, does everything for him. He's super nice. He's literally willing to die for Kevin, but it takes Kevin until the end of the film to actually understand and grow into that role where he can be a good team leader. John Cena comes in because he plays a character called 206, a stuntman who has had all 206 human bones in his body broken. He is also the mentor to Doug, and therefore he, uh, well, and also a lover, by the way, and so therefore he helps Doug figure out a plan so he can exact his revenge on this piece of shit actor. John Cena is just a lumbering mass of fucking muscle that is here to help Doug, and overall, we see later in the film, he fulfills that. He comes in and tries to kill Kevin Hart, uh, and then in the middle of a scuffle, Jordan comes in and throws a knife, and it catches John Cena directly in the skull. This was honestly one of the funniest moments, because John Cena, the way he plays it, is so fucking funny. He has a knife sticking out of his head while he's, like, asking for breakfast, rubbing his tummy, and he walks like a zombie to the kitchen before dropping fucking dead. Then they ask, uh, Doug asks, well, where is 206 if you're not trying to kill anybody? And they're like, oh, he's making breakfast. The entire thing was absurd, but it was funny, and it was done in a really good comedic way for the, the acting that was done here. Now, the main thing is I feel like all of this just kind of happens at once, and that's one of my other issues, rather uh, than only having, like, the first couple episodes being a little more mid. I think that we could have had a little bit more intense conflict and really seen more of the growth happen over the course of time rather than having it all kind of happen in the last three episodes where Kevin just finally realizes that he's a fucking asshole and that he needs to fix things. And I think more of a focus on that conflict again would have brought a little more intrigue and overall made more sense to the character that Kevin Hart was portraying because to all of a sudden have him realize the error 
of his ways when he's been such a cunt this entire time feels a little strange and out of place. But generally speaking, this movie was hilarious and I really loved every single character and it was really fun to see uh, in a good dynamic play out between Kevin Hart, uh, John Cena, and Ben Schwartz. And Ben Schwartz fucking killed it here. Mans needs way more comedy roles because he's so funny. Can't believe I freaking saw John Cena's balls. Well, maybe not his real balls, but it was it was hilarious regardless. Essentially, John Cena plays a character, I believe his name is 206, at least that's his code name, and he was a stunt double person, and there is Doug, who wants revenge on Kevin Hart, because essentially what happened is Kevin Hart and Jordan were working on a movie together. Jordan sent her stunt double home, and Kevin was worried that he would all of a sudden be in the media. People would be like, oh, I can't believe Kevin Hart didn't send his stunt double home. So he just straight up fires Doug. Doug does look exactly like Kevin Hart. It's like his evil twin version of himself. And it just works extremely well together. Ben Schwartz's comedic timing with Kevin Hart, I can't express enough, is just absolute perfection. I really hope these two are in more movies together because, damn, they, they they just work well on screen together. There's a scene with Kevin, Andre, and 206 when they're heading to a forest, and 206 just casually mentions he had sex with Doug. And Andre brings this up after 206 leaves, and Kevin's reaction is just fantastic. <laughs> it feels very genuine. And Kevin Hart is really good with that, like, the comedic timing and making it feel like a genuine emotion as long as he's got somebody who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him in comedy, and Ben Schwartz does that. Andre essentially has a mom, and there's a scene in this film slash series where basically Andre's mom, because Kevin Hart was shot in the arm, he didn't think it was real, he thought it was all in a uh, film, I thought maybe the dude was going crazy. It's, it's not all over the place where it's just... The, absolute mess it just all flows very fluidly together and essentially what happens is they go to Andre's mom's house while well, he lives with his mom so it's his and his mom's house and she sees Kevin Hart has been shot in the arm she wants him to basically take off his shirt and then she's gonna essentially nurse him back to health and uh, when Jordan asks oh are you a doctor she's like no I'm better I'm a mother and basically, there uh, proceeds to be a Kathy Bates misery type scene where Kevin Hart is essentially drugged out of his mind after eating six year old pork chops. And Kathy Bates, I mean, I mean, Andre's mom essentially uh, hangs up the phone when uh, Kevin Hart's trying to talk to her. And I thought for a second that all of a sudden, like, she's going to flip. No, she's a great addition to the rest of the series, and I'm happy they didn't go the insane route with the mom. It, it works really, really well. Now, typically in these comedies, you'll see a female lead is meant to serve as just eye candy and occasionally funny, but really just more there for eye candy. Natalie does not is not just there for eye candy. She holds her own against Ben Schwartz and Kevin Hart. And because she's very logical with her comedy and their comedy together, it just all works well. You have this perfect balance when all three of them are on screen together. Now, I do think the one thing that I will say is Doug as the villain slash Kevin Hart is played by Kevin Hart. I don't think he's as great a villain as John Cena. There's a point where John Cena essentially, Jordan throws a knife. It goes in John Cena's head. And it's fantastic because basically he just goes full zombie mode. And he's just a, he's a better uh, villain. But I think Doug, because he's the insane part, you have polar opposites that make it feel very balanced. And that's why they have both of them as villains in this movie. Now, every episode that I saw had at least a few good laughs. There's eight episodes in total. Most of them average around 10 minutes. And the big reason why I said Die Hard 2 is a 4.75 out of 5 instead of a 5 out of 5 is just because the the beginning is a little bit slower and but after your episode two you become fully invested and the comedy just takes a huge spike and it really never dips 
it, even all the way to the end, the movie is just absolutely hilarious. And now, the reason why I believe there's going to be a third season or a third movie is because the second season or second movie left the cliffhanger at the end. So essentially, Doug is arrested. Uh, Jordan, Kevin, Andre, uh, Andre's mom all uh, beat Doug and Doug is arrested. However, there's a basically a switcheroo and Kevin Hart's the actually the one that's thrown in prison. So I'd be interested to know where this season or the series, uh, the series goes or the movie goes from here because I'm fully into this. I think the third one, I think that should be the end. But the first two films are near perfect comedies. The second one, I, I mean, really close to giving it a five because of how much I enjoyed it. But I can't recommend this enough. Just go out and watch it. Like I said, it's free on it's free on Roku TV. And I'm going to toss it back to Rocky to close us out. So what do you guys think? Are you guys fans of Die Hard and Die Hard 2? Do you think the first is better or the second is better? Have you not seen them at all? Again, I definitely recommend going and checking them out because they are some of the funniest things Kevin Hart has done in recent memory. Especially after we got that terrible Mark Wahlberg, Kevin Hart Netflix movie. We really needed some good Kevin Hart comedy in order to be able to let him, uh, you know, continue his career otherwise we were gonna have to say pull the fucking plug you know what i mean besides that you can follow us on twitter and instagram that'll pop up during the outro and you can also let us know any other movies you'd like us to review or movies that are coming out soon that you'd like us to talk about besides that uh we will see you all in the next smoking session Just to open up a new account